I picked this up locally used today. It cost me $130 Canadian, which is about 90 to 95 American. Uh, it's a Dell Optiplex 3060. Uh, these are actually pretty expensive online still. You can still get them for like Canadian. I think it's like three to $400 or something like that. They're pretty pricey. Let's just look at the outside. It's a small form factor PC, so I'll just bring in an SSD to compare. Um, so it's not tiny. It's not the size of like some of those B-Link or Minis forms, which tend to be closer to about this big, but those are also thicker. So in terms of volume, this is probably about the same. It's definitely small. Uh, you can see here, you get two USB uh, A. These are 3.0 or 3.1, so they're not gonna be super fast, but they'll be okay for what I'm using it for. You know, um, power here, there's some ventilation on the front. Nothing on the side. Uh, just uh, some kind of tag there. This is all metal, by the way. It's a nice feeling device. Uh, bottom just has feet on it. The back, on this model specifically, you get Ethernet, which I will be using. Uh, there is uh, Wi-Fi. There's a little attachment over here in the bag that came with it, so you get Wi-Fi. Two more USB-A, uh, two point something. They'll be slower. And another uh, couple 3.0 right there, and you get a lock slot. Some of these you can find that have like a USB-C port on them. Um, I don't need that for what I'm using it for. I'm just gonna be using this as basically just a mini PC, a media PC. Um, and then it has, uh, that's the power in there, HDMI and display port. Oh. So you just slide the whole front off. I was actually holding the front closed. That's, this is all one piece. So it just slides off. Uh, so there is a uh, SSD or hard drive dock. This looks like it'll fit a 2.5 inch. Um, so you could get, you know, like a one terabyte or a two terabyte or whatever and toss that in there. That's cool. Um, let's look at chips here. Some type of chip that's just passively air-cooled. Don't know what that is. Um, you get your Wi-Fi here, which I'm assuming would be upgradable. I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's an Intel-based machine, so you could probably toss in decently fast Wi-Fi, to be honest. Um, get one of those, like, AX120 or whatever they're called. So that's that there. Take it out. Oops, that's not an NVMe. That's a... Uh, Right there, actually. So it looks like it has an M.2 SATA. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. So M.2 SATA. So it'll be pretty slow. It'll well, slow subject. It'll be about 500 uh, megabytes per second, which isn't terrible, but it's fine. Um, but that looks like it's a uh, actually capable of putting an NVMe in there, based on the fact that the way that's set up. So I guess this is compatible with both. Some slots are compatible, backwards compatible. It looks like you can adjust it. So. Uh, there's the little screw there. You can take that out and make it into a smaller 2230 size, but it looks like you probably can't slot in a 2240 size. Um, so you're going to be able to put in the smaller form factor if need be. Um, so that's the SATA right there. So, you know, that'll port, that'll slot right in there. I'm going to put it in the caddy. I'm only just going to put in this kind of budget. Um, it's okay. It's got 3D NAND, but it's not a high quality drive by any means. And uh, that should be fine. That'll give me a terabyte there. And then this is 256. That's probably fine for me. I'm going to test out an NVMe just for the sake of testing out an NVMe. I don't actually know how to take any of this out. Um, that just obviously clips off. Oh, it just comes out like that. So you get a fan there. Nothing crazy. I mean, not the best kind of fins there. Um, but it'll move air. I mean, it'll be something kind of like a laptop. Um, base cooling. The interesting thing is that's actually not sitting over top of the cooling system. It's going to actually blow directly in here. The difference is, you know, if you get a laptop, you're going to get basically heat pipes. This is, you know, you have a fin here and then you're going to push air over it. So it should actually cool pretty well. The air will come out of this vent here and it will actually push air directly through these fins here. You'll get some cooling and it'll come out the back here. So let's just remove this here. Um, I suspect Bect it'll have decent cooling. Um, it's not going to be like groundbreaking, like I said, but it should be reasonable. I'm kind of releasing this in a star pattern so I don't put too much pressure on one side on the other. It's actually mounted pretty firmly, to be honest. Okay, so there we go. Let's have a look at the paste. It's actually fairly moist. Um, at least that. Oh, that's the external. This is it's not bad. It's decently covered. Someone might have repasted this at some point. I kind of doubt this is like five-year-old thermal paste, but you never know. Um, I'm going to redo it, but that's fine. So, we'll, uh, you know, if you want to upgrade the processor, you can, which is great. So you just pop that out there, undo the slot there, and then you just take it out. Um, I'll put a, the specs up for the socket to tell you specifically which models are on. I'll put it on the screen, um, but you'll be able to basically put in various CPUs here. This is the i7, the highest, and be soldered. 
but it looks like it is swappable. So that's great. So if you know you pick up, I don't know, a lower end one of these, and then you can find, you can actually source the CPU itself, then you'll be able to basically upgrade this and put in a higher end CPU like, you know, this one's in a, an i7 8th gen, so it's pretty capable. 8700 is still pretty capable today. Uh, looks like he has a single 16 gigabyte RAM stick in there. That's kind of, I guess that's fine. Um, really what you're gonna want to do is have this in dual channel though. So um, I would have liked to have seen two eight gigabyte sticks in all honesty. Um, so this has a single 16. Um, so, you know, this is probably decent RAM and it will give you enough capacity. But with these type of machines where you have integrated graphics in that too, you really do wanna have uh, dual channel RAM, meaning um, so you have two paired sticks rather than a single stick. It's always des more desirable than having one larger capacity in an open slot there. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna test this out, make sure it works. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to try an NVMe in there. I have one just lying around somewhere and I'll just pop it in and see if it works. But And there's your performance, basically the same as any SAT SSD, so 2.5 inch, which is fine to be honest. Um, you know, NVMe is gonna be quicker, especially for booting, but that's reasonable. Here's the system here, I put the NVMe drive. This is just a one terabyte kind of budget one uh, that I use basically to mess around with different systems. Here's the RAM I picked up locally, it's ADATA. They make uh, decent SSDs to be honest. Um, you know, they're not the best items or products around, but they're good, they're good, they're reliable, and the RAM is good. I've used it in the past, many times over the past years. Um, so I bought these for 30 bucks Canadian off a guy brand new. Uh, he said they're brand new, I mean, they look like they are, whatever. Um, so 30 bucks Canadian versus say spending, I don't know, I think it was like 80 or 90 Canadian, even on Amazon and Memory Express and whatever local things we had for something similar. So this is way better uh, price because, you know, I'm not looking for the, the best memory in the world. This device only takes, I think it can only clock at 2666 megahertz RAM. You might be able to overclock it, but I don't think so. So this is 3200 RAM, uh, megahertz RAM, but uh, you can see there but it'll just clock down, so it's fine. Um, so we'll be going from 16 gigabyte single channel to 16 gigabyte dual channel. So there we go, there's the 2.6 RAM in, so we should have 30, we should have 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory now. Okay, here we go. Looks like we're running uh, 16 gigabytes. Obviously the VRAM is stealing some. Dual channel there. So we have the frame rate up there and the average FPS. Uh, I mean, I'm on a big screen, so it doesn't look fantastic. I'm on a 4K screen. Um, but if you have a 1080p screen, this looks totally fine. On the game capture, it looks great. Um, and then, you know, on a even a 1440p screen, it should scale a little better. Uh, this is pretty good frame rates. Like, this is a dense area, and we're over 30. Let's try turning up the resolution. This, would, this is probably going to tax it a fair bit, but let's just see what it's like to put out the 1080p. Yeah, so 1080p, we basically halved our FPS there. So the game looks a little better, I guess. I mean, it's, so 1080p, uh, it's it's pushing it here. So 23 FPS. That's that's a bit much for Grand Theft Auto V. Um, I mean, you could you could certainly play like this. Um, you know, it's not way below. 30, but it's down at 25, and it is kind of nauseating. Yep, and there we go. So 1280 by 800. Uh, you know, this is closer to like a Steam Deck resolution, um, so you're going to get something similar to that. Yeah, so entirely playable at uh, on this integrated graphics. You're obviously not going to crank the settings or anything, but uh, you know, it is playable. Okay, so here we are in Metal Gear Solid 5. Um, I played a little bit here, well, a lot here, because the intro is really long. And you can see here we're at uh, 38 FPS. I mean, the game looks fine. You can play like this. It's not, you don't need to have higher resolution um, and, you know, higher settings. Obviously, it'll look, it would look better with much higher. So you can see here we're, we're above 30. And again, this is, you know, last gen consoles played at 30 FPS. I don't know, let's just go like that, high and high. It's probably not gonna play very well, but eh, maybe. 
all this post processing and lighting and stuff is not super important. It's just going to basically, yeah, I mean, there you go. Now we're on high textures and high, high textures, high model and everything else is on low. And I mean, we're still getting really high frames here, 35. You could, and the average is high too. So, I mean, you could certainly play the game like this. Okay, so here we are in Batman Arkham Origins. We have the resolution up a little bit higher. So we're at 1050 here instead of uh, 800p. So a little bit higher resolution. And you can see here, you know, the settings aren't up very high at all whatsoever, but uh, we're at a slightly higher resolution. And uh, yeah, we're above 30. So you could drop this down in resolution down to those Steam Deck resolution, that 800p. But uh, this looks to be playing quite well. 1050p, so a little bit, little bit below 1080. If you're really worried about frame rates, you could drop it down here and, you know, go down to those uh, Steam Deck-like settings here. And now our frame rate's way up. 40 FPS, 41. Um, so you could certainly play like this and get, uh, you know, 40 FPS. I mean, they're not getting hot. This is the CPU, 60 degrees average. Max is, you know, 60 whatever degrees. It's just not getting hot. Um, you know, over here, same idea. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's staying really quite cool, despite the fact that this isn't, you know, this is a 45 watt, slightly higher power um, for like a mini PC. 16 times filtering here and some upscaling too. So, you know, this isn't even stock. And we're running at 30, uh, no problem. Obviously, you know, the game is actually locked to 30. So um, a lot of PSP games were. So, I mean, yeah, we're locked at 30. Everything's performing really well. Every time I have to play a GameCube game, I have to bust out my Wii, which can be kind of annoying. Um, it's packed up in my closet, which is annoying. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see here, this is running perfectly. 30 FPS. Again, it can go higher, but it's locked. Um, I'm pretty sure you can set it you know, higher if you want, but I just want to show it how it plays. And it's playing perfectly. It looks great. So here's some Dreamcast emulation and the Dreamcast runs at 60 FPS. So we can see here we're at 60 FPS, obviously. to bust all these things out. So if I can just have this mini PC that can play all of these games, all these emulators so perfectly, then uh, you know I have an emulation powerhouse for basically a hundred bucks on top of all the productivity. Overall, I'm extremely happy with this little mini PC. Put in an NVMe drive. Um, I tested it with one terabyte, you can go higher. And then it has a SATA, 2.5 inch SATA. So you can get a lot of storage in this. You can get you know, one terabyte NVMEs, two terabyte NVMEs. You can get the SATA up as much as you want. So you can get a lot of storage in here. It runs extremely quiet, very, very cool, which is, you know, great. These can come with a lot of different CPUs. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of 6,000 series and 7,000 series uh, Intel in these here, but the 8,000 series is really, you know, a really, really good buy. As long as you're aware that, you know, it doesn't have the most powerful graphics, you can play reasonably, 
new uh, PC games through Steam and that too. You just want to turn the settings down a little bit. However, it's really, really good with emulation because, you know, it has quite a powerful processor, to be honest. A uh, the 8700T i7 is, you know, six core, 12 thread processor, and it's able to handle those games easily. And uh, in terms of desktop day-to-day -day tasks, it's super snappy uh, where it runs perfectly on this. So this has been a really good buy. Um, these can go for a fair bit on eBay. I've seen them for pretty expensive on eBay, especially when you get an i7 8700T like this. They can be really expensive. But, you know, check locally. See if you can see online on, like, Facebook or whatever your marketplaces are. And, you know, see if you can find one with, you know, an i5 or if you're really lucky like I was, an i7 here. And these are really great machines. I mean, they're tiny and they're powerful super quiet um you know again they don't have the most powerful gpus like some of those minis forum ones that you know have the new amd you know, vega graphics or rdna graphics obviously it's not going to be able to perform like that in terms of gaming but those are substantially expen more expensive those are seven or eight times more expensive than what i paid here and in terms of just cpu performance and you know what i'm going to be using it for this is killer i basically have a emulation box that i can stick underneath my living room tv and just you know, be able to play really any emulator that I'm interested in, PS2 or GameCube or earlier. Um, and then I don't have to bust out those machines, which is, you know, it's kind of nice to play on dedicated hardware, but it's really nice to be able to also play, you know, all those different emulators and all those different games on one tiny little box that sits basically underneath my TV.